Now, sorting through the data of the January jobs report and what it tells us about the state of the American labor market. NewsHour economics correspondent Paul Salmon spent this day trying to unpack both the positives and the negatives. It's part of his ongoing reporting, Making Sense of Financial News. For a second straight month, job growth failed to live up to economists' expectations. Okay. Fish tacos? Just 113,000 jobs were added last month, a dismal 75,000 in December. For some analysis, we spoke to an eminent economist at the Brookings Institution. No, not this guy. He just happened to be walking through our shot. This guy, senior fellow Justin Wolfers. His take on today's numbers, the employment situation hasn't gotten worse. Whatever you thought yesterday is pretty much what you should feel today. Uh, my view has been the U.S. economy has been creating about 150 to 200,000 jobs a month every month for the past three years. The headlines of today's report make it look like that didn't happen, but you get into the details and it looks like actually that's what the economy's kept on doing. What do you mean? 113,000 jobs is the number from the establishment survey. Jobs reports, actually two surveys, survey a bunch of firms. They told us that they created 113,000 jobs last month. We also survey households and ask people, do you have a job? And if you look at that number instead, it says we created 616,000 jobs, a, a bonanza. So we've got two measures. And the question is, how should you think about both of them? You know, I put most of my weight on the firm survey, but even a little bit of weight on a terrific number, a lot of weight on a moderately disappointing number, on average says things were probably okay. But doesn't this call into question the legitimacy of the monthly jobs data? One survey... 600,000 more people are working. The other survey, supposedly the more reliable, barely 100,000 more. This is just the nature of statistics. Data are noisy. Our job as economists is to look through the data and try and figure out the signal. So we shouldn't go crazy on any single number. A lot of people will say, oh, the, house, the firm survey says only 113,000 jobs are created, the economy's falling apart. That's the wrong thing. This is a noisy number. Noisy meaning... There's a big margin of error around it. As much as they said how employment grew by 113,000, in fact, they're only 90% sure that it grew between 23,000 and 203,000. So let's look over the past three months, and the payroll survey tells us that we've been creating 154,000 jobs a month. That's reasonably healthy, not great, but the recovery continues. <laughs> or continues to look at the glass half empty, barely. Last year, Firms added an average of 194,000 jobs a month. Slower hiring this year could be a sign of a floundering economy. And yes, while today's drop in the unemployment rate would seem to be a positive, the story for months now has been that the rate has dropped because so many people have given up the job hunt. But that's not the story of the falling unemployment rate this time around. It fell this month because a lot of people got jobs, not because they've fallen out of the labour force. So we've seen unemployment now at 6.6%. The good news part of that is it's falling, and it's falling quite rapidly, well over a percentage point down over the past year. The bad news, let's not confuse changes with levels. The bad news is 6.6% of the labour force is still unemployed. That's historically high, a lot of households suffering. There's a lot we can do to do better. And there are still nearly 4 million long-term unemployed whose job search has lasted 27 weeks or more. For them, this week's failure in the Senate to extend On emergency vote, unemployment insurance offers little solace. For an even more inclusive picture of un- and underemployment, Paul has devised his Salmon Scale. You can find that on our Making Sense page on our website.